Good morning, everyone. After this artful detour by Maria Karakushev and Ivan Shopov, I welcome you to She Leader in Shell. At the quarters of MoveBG here in Sofia, at this hour, we were supposed to open the third international conference dedicated to the role of digital female leadership in Europe. With respect to the special measures taken by the Bulgarian government for limiting the spread of the coronavirus, we decided to postpone the event, but postponed is not cancelled. She Leader at Digital 2020 is now scheduled to the 14th of May. So free up your calendar and join us then. In case you wonder why, the following discussion about female leadership in the age of, age of digital is just a glimpse of the topics that we're going to go through in May. With some of the most inspiring role models of our time and in our society. Three of them are sitting with us here today, coming from very different professional domains. But these three ladies embody much more than just career success. Because leadership is not just a position in our CVs. Leadership means so much more than that. To be a true leader, one needs a mindset that embraces responsibility. In all domains of life, at the workplace, in family life, in society. And especially in critical times like now, I personally believe that we need to ask ourselves, what is my responsibility and how can I contribute to the well-being of those around me? Without further ado, I would like to introduce you to our panelists today. At a safe distance in the other room is the fabulous lady that you saw in the video in the beginning, Maria Karakusheva. As a contemporary classical composer, Maria dares to combine the classical piano with new digital elements like 3D visualizations and interactive media, along with modern house, pop, rock and jazz music. Being an inspiration for others, Maria is dedicated to supporting women in independent arts. Smiling next to me is Irma Menzer, who comes from one much more traditional sector. Irma is currently spearheading the operations of the World Bank in Sofia as the head of IT. Bringing 30 years of experience in IT, she initially started her career path as a teacher in math and a junior consultant at the World Bank. And maybe because she knows best about the challenges of being a woman, pioneering in a male-dominated structures like a bank and fields like IT, she is now a committed supporter and mentor of women in ICTs. Last but not least, in the other room, is Sasha Bezuhanova, who many of you know as the founder of MoveBG, an angel investor and an activist. Prior to that, Sasha climbed the corporate ladder of HP to the very top management. Being the first woman from Eastern European country in a director position, she was responsible for 67 countries. As an angel investor, she is dedicated to supporting the local startup ecosystem, women in ICTs and leadership. She is also the reason why we are sitting here today. Thank you, Sasha. Which brings me to my first question. According to the report of McKinsey Global Institute last year, automation is esti estimated to displace between 40 and 160 million women worldwide from their career jobs. At the same time, future jobs will challenge us not only to develop our digital literacy, but also use more of our social, emotional and higher cognitive skills. For women in the new economy, this could mean both a risk and an opportunity. Sasha, you are an initiator of the She Leader at Digital Conference. Why is it important to have a public discussion about female leadership in the age of automation? Yeah, actually, statistics are worrying, and that's why we decided to uh, stimulate the dialogue on what can be done in the age of automation. Uh, the age of Automation is time of uh, fundamental disruption and creation in the same time that needs the talent, ideas and commitment of uh, everybody today in this society, both women and men. And um, we, of course, read the statistics, but we also uh, know the answers and through She Leader at Digital Conference, uh, we want uh, to give uh, seven paths 
in accordance to statistics uh, not to uh, happen uh, with this uh, measure and scale. Uh, coming back to your question, uh, Irina, why we need uh, female leadership and is it needed at all? Uh, I have three reasons for that that are different but connected. Uh, first one is uh, related to the uh, human rights. So obviously uh, still we have in our society lots of prejudices, old models of thinking and although lots has been achieved by the activists, by the women movements in terms of uh, um, creating an environment where home violence uh, uh, practices will be addressed and limited uh, or uh, every other dimension of uh, um, female uh, malpractices in the world, uh, still there is an attitude that uh, women are victims. And um, I personally believe that we need to change this uh, rationale if we want to uh, be adequate to the new reality uh, where women and men uh, should and can contribute together in an adequate and uh, full functional manner. Uh, we need to drive culture uh, that uh, everybody uh, should uh, have a, a place and environment uh, to contribute and uh, uh, to fulfill the ideas and dreams uh, and uh, this needs an investment. Uh, second reason is uh, connected to the uh, women's professional engagement. In a um, time when um, uh, all economy is digitally empowered, I just will quote a statistic <coughs> from IDC that by 2025 uh, is expected that 80% of the world GDP will be produced by the uh, digitally connected businesses. So we need digital experts, we need those specialists where they are um, if we only today in Europe are lacking 500,000 digital professionals. Obviously by mobilizing uh, more women and engaging them uh, to get uh, knowledgeable and involved actively in this economy, uh, we can uh, uh, secure uh, smooth uh, transition to this uh, new world uh, where artificial intelligence also need its production but also knowledgeable communities uh, to uh, operate in a competitive way uh, within this uh, economic reality. And uh, third, maybe less realized uh, reason uh, is that um, we are living through fundamental transition in the world today. Uh, the axiomas of our uh, world uh, are new and changed. And this creates uh, lots of frictions and contradictions between the new established uh, uh, social, political and economic models that uh, uh, are ruling the world today and the emerging new world that comes with uh, totally uh, new um, setup and structure. Uh, we need new type of leadership and new type of entrepreneurs uh, that comes uh, with a culture of collaboration, of culture of openness, and we know them. This is the new generation of people uh, that uh, uh, live uh, uh, by exchanging and uh, uh, creating and co-creating together. And in times like this, um, uh, there is a uh, more feminine attitude uh, needed in the leadership uh, where inclusiveness uh, and uh, impact dimension is part of the uh, reality. Uh, I personally believe that uh, women uh, that uh, uh, by nature uh, are carrying the instinct uh, to give new life uh, they are to play a key role in uh, uh, the birth and growth of this uh, uh, new world that uh, we are uh, mm, uh, in the same time uh, witnessing, but we are also creating. So uh, that's why uh, we need to talk and work and help in an active way to promote the uh, 
balance uh, between men and women uh, in the leadership and to stimulate this uh, feminine attitude of the leadership in the society. Thank you, Sasha. Um, speaking about creating, I would like to uh, turn to Maria now. Uh, Maria, as a contemporary classical composer, you dare to combine classical music with various digital, visual, and sound experiences, along with the modern genres like house, rock, and pop. As such, I would say that you're a first mover, a trendsetter, and an inspiration for young artists. What drives you to make such daring moves? I'll start uh, with the woman who played the most important role for choosing music as a career, uh, and that is my mother. When I was only five years old, um, she asked me if I wanted to play the piano. And I remember that um, I didn't know what exactly is piano, but I was totally sure that I want to play it. And uh, since then, my desire never decreased. Um, maybe my mother was uh, brave enough to raise a musician, uh, having in mind that um, we have no musicians in my family and uh, perhaps this triggered uh, many challenges in, uh, along, the li along the way and uh, become part of my um, path as an artist and performer. Um, maybe one of uh, the reasons I become a crossover producer and a performer is that I always wanted to play the most uh, difficult pieces and uh, not so popular. And uh, when I decided to start mixing uh, different kinds of genres and uh, classical music, uh, that was the first steps in my path as a composer. And later I uh, started to compose my own music. I'm not afraid to experiment and uh, to fail. We know that uh, the most, uh, the true innovators uh, are those who experiment boldly and uh, persistently, and in the end, success comes. A great point about failure. Thank you. Irma, advancing to a leadership position in the financial sector must be challenging, because I assume that uh, it's a very male-dominated sector. But doing so in a domain like IT, which is also male-dominated, must be a challenging doubled, if not tripled. Is it possible to achieve that without adopting the already um, established by, by men styles of leadership? How did you find the leader in you as a woman? So it's challenging, no doubt. But with challenge comes it's thrilling. Is it possible? Absolutely. I hear a hidden question in there whether we have to emulate males to be successful. And the, que and the answer for me is absolutely not. To me, leadership is not necessarily something where we do what somebody else does. Mm -hmm. For me, it's about authenticity. You have to be authentic and you have to not be afraid to make a decision. So when I look at leadership, I don't think about, oh, you know, the guys would do it this way and because I'm a girl, I have to do it that way. You know, the thing about leadership is what you said in the beginning, it's responsibility. It's responsibility to self, to team, to community and those around you. So if, if I had to answer the question about how would it be in a male-dominated world? Look, we need both men and women to make the world go round. And then I believe the last part of your question is, uh, how, how do I f find the, the woman in me? Look, Irena, I'm all woman. <laughs> I like jewelry. I have a spare pair of earrings in my purse. So for me, womanhood is part and parcel of being a leader and a decision maker. Mm. And that's what I have to say. Thank you.
The automation of work and the digital disruption of existing business models as we know them challenge leaders today. Based on our experience, uh, um, on your experience from very different sectors you're working in, um, what are the most important skills uh, leaders need in the age of digital transformation? And maybe I would like to start with Irma now. Sure. So I would say when we think about digital transformation and we think about the word transformation, although digital is powerful in itself, I would say the skills that leaders need are flexibility and agility. But let's not forget what we talked about before, responsibility. Mm -hmm. When you're responsible, it drives you to make decisions. Right now today, as women, we made decisions, didn't we? There is the coronavirus, the global leaders are making a decision, and we decided that we would continue this uh, conversation. So to me, those are critical, absolute critical to leadership. It's nice to say innovation, digital trends following, but at the end of the day, I think that decision making is critical. In fact, I will go so far as to say that I think that a bad decision is better than indecisiveness because indecisiveness will lead for circumstances determining what the outcome is. Mm -hmm. But when you make a bad decision, when I make a bad decision, and Lord knows I certainly have made bad decisions, I have an opportunity to correct it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to say. Great, thank you. Maria, would you like uh, yeah. to go back to the question, what do you think is the skill set that uh, leaders need today in the age of digital transformation? Yes, it's not very uh, known that artists uh, must do a complex task to be able uh, to combine several professions. Uh, as example, a producer, a major, a promoter, uh, a composer, and even a social media expert. And uh, in order to bring his uh, product, his art, uh, to light and to be noticed. However, to reach a world level, much more efforts uh, are needed and um, working with the right team uh, is a must. In fact, uh, most of the members of uh, the artist team uh, have nothing to do with art and here comes the challenge. Um, the artist uh, to succeed in conveying uh, his visions that this team can recreate it. Also, the audience uh, mm, don't see the, um, all the work behind the product. They uh, see only the final product. And uh, they, don't, they can't uh, see uh, um, what is behind the different areas that uh, you can cover. And uh, maybe this is uh, not so bad because uh, that means that your job is perfectly done and you manage to create a whole unit. We have heard uh, the phrase, uh, art is not understood. Uh, that, that those are people uh, who are deeply immersed in their art and they close their eyes for the uh, world around them. And the world is uh, constantly changing, um, is dynamic, and uh, we have to be very flexible and uh, never stop learning. One of the reasons um, I'm highly collaborative is the interaction between the different spheres, knowledge and visions. Uh, that teaches you a lot and refines you. Thank you. Sasha, what makes a good leader of, in the age of digital? And I'm asking this regardless of gender. Um, actually, just to add uh, on what has been said uh, already, um, the leader today is different than uh, the leader yesterday. One would say that uh, leadership is about attitude, about caring responsibility, and this never changes. Um, I think that a leader today should be much more open 
and um, to leave a space uh, to his collaborators or employees, the people that are responsible for a project or within the team, uh, to uh, stimulate their creativity and in the same time uh, to keep the system still running. Uh, why I'm stressing on the creativity? Because uh, we are living in very, very dynamically uh, changed environment and um, new models, uh, entrepreneurship-wise or intrapreneurship-wise, are absolutely needed in accordance uh, with the progress ahead. We as leaders uh, should be able to uh, cope with this change, uh, to uh, be ready to uh, lose control for a moment in accordance to uh, really uh, stimulate the development. And I personally believe that today, um, speaking about leadership, uh, the component of the motivation of being visionary, of uh, really make people connect around a common impact goal, uh, is more important than uh, really looking into Excel sheets and the uh, targets and how uh, they are fu fu fulfilled by the team at the first instance. So we need um, uh, rather inclusive uh, leaders, uh, people that uh, are leading by mission, uh, then uh, um, these uh, managers that uh, uh, normally the business schools are producing, uh, and my generation knows exactly what I mean. <laughs> Thank you. I believe that uh, breaking down the barriers for women to, to leadership um, are just both men and women to look beyond certain stereotypes established in our uh, society and also at the workplace. And I'm sure that along the way um, you have met such men. How did such or these men support you in your su success? Um, Sasha, maybe I would like to start with you because I know a bit more about your past and I know that you have <laughs> something to say here. <laughs> um. Yeah, it, it, honestly, I had uh, great mentors and leaders and uh, people that have been co-pilots in my career. And I will mention two of them. Uh, it happened that uh, I've started my management uh, experience very early. I was 26 when I became country manager of a German company called Helige. And how this happened was because of uh, someone, his name is uh, Lebel Peshek, uh, um, who was my manager. Uh, I've started as a junior salesperson and three months after um, he came and said, Sasha, you want to, uh, to uh, take the uh, operation for Bulgaria? And this was quite shocking to me. I said, oh, you know, I don't uh, have economic background. I never have sold something, uh, anything in my life. And he said, but you have uh, potential and um, I'm sure you'll make it and I'll help you and will help you. And uh, this was a big, big lesson to me um, at a time when I didn't have a biography, somebody identify uh, potential in me and uh, this was also a motivation. Uh, on the next year, I became sales manager number one in Central Eastern Europe. And um, this uh, trust uh, was a turning point in my life. And th then I did a lot uh, a, on the business stage. And um, second uh, manager, he was really great, great leader. Uh, and I'm happy to name him Peter Testen. Uh, was also um, uh, for me a teacher in my career and a coach and a mentor. Uh, he was managing uh, for HP um, Europe, Middle East and Africa. And um, in 1997, when uh, the big economic crisis and recession um, uh, in Bulgaria was affected, uh, I went to him and said, Peter, uh, you are opening up uh, operations in uh, FHP in all surrounding countries. Why not Bulgaria? 
he said, look at what is happening in Bulgaria. Uh, you have such a high inflation, nothing from the measures that uh, are needed uh, is fulfilled in accordance with uh, corporations like HP to open up uh, an operation. And uh, I said, uh, come to Sofia just for 24 hours and meet my team. And he did it. And uh, we uh, composed a program uh, that was showing the two big uh, potential customers that we had. We had uh, three pages of business plan and we've been so motivated. Uh, and on the way to the airport, uh, I asked him, so what's happening now? And he said, OK, uh, we'll invest in Bulgaria, but uh, this is your and your team's responsibility. And uh, I learned uh, one thing from him, uh, that uh, if you uh, see the plan, the enthusiasm, the concept of the team, you can take a risk. And um, as a result, uh, this team that uh, started and was born, uh, we've been seven people that started the HP operation uh, in Bulgaria in the most critical time um, for, for this country. We had seven projects that has been contribution to the worldwide practice of HP as an innovation and the corporation made money uh, big time all over the world and also uh, today, HP is employing 7,000 people here that are driving critical uh, back office services uh, that are the backbone of the operations. And this happened because I've learned uh, an important lesson from uh, uh, this manager uh, that you need to give a space to uh, people with ideas, with imagination and to support your team and to take as a leader responsibility uh, in case something fails, being uh, supportive and uh, uh, but also uh, keeping uh, uh, your teams accountable. And uh, also I want to mention uh, on a private uh, note my husband who has been uh, uh, really very, very helpful and the hand and uh, base camp uh, uh, accompanying me uh, throughout uh, uh, all of my uh, career. Without his support and without uh, his hand, I eventually wouldn't be able to, uh, to achieve what I have achieved in uh, professional things as an impact for the uh, IT industry in Bulgaria and what I'm doing today in supporting the innovation ecosystem uh, here. Thank you, Sasha. That was great. Uh, uh, Maria, would you like to, to share with us maybe, maybe a story of uh, yeah. someone who supported you in your career, a man? Well, my, my conclusion is that there is no problem men of men against women, but the lack of information and action. Uh, most men around me um, don't even realize that there is a problem. I have to explain to them and uh, give them uh, an example of uh, the shortage and even sometimes the lack of uh, composers and uh, producers in the music industry. And then they are surprised. Um, mm -hmm. I will quote um, an American professor and uh, researcher uh, and will tell that about 27% are the female artists. Only 13% are the songwriters, female songwriters, and only 3% are the producers in the music industry who are female. So we can, we can see that uh, the statistics is not very nice, but uh, I believe that uh, together we can change that statistics and uh, we can take it to our advantage without uh, um, putting uh, men against the women. Um, I will give a personal example um, with uh, my work because um, in my mind uh, when I started to compose um, it was a small 
practically it was a small step because all of the preparation, uh, the music preparation I had and all the experience. But in my mind, it was a huge step to cross uh, the unspoken, the invisible border, because no one had ever told me, why don't you try? It's not so scary. It's also an option. And um, I had to grow up, uh, overcome um, the, the social stereotypes and say to myself, why don't you try indeed? And three years later, I released my album, but with the help of a lot of men, and I'm very grateful because they believe in my skills and qualities. Yeah, it's very important that um, someone believes in us. What about you, Irma? Would you like to share a story? Sure, absolutely. So, um, I come from a large family. There are four girls and two boys in my family. And I want to give credit to my late father because he always instilled in within the family that there was, he didn't, we didn't call it gender equality at that time, but pretty much, you know, he used his own terminology. Now you have to understand how hard this was because my mom is very traditional and half Japanese. Mm. And uh, my father encouraged uh, book readings uh, over housekeeping and things like that. So when I was 16, uh, my father told me that if you graduate top of your class, you, I'll get you whatever you want. Influenced by my brother, I said, I want a motorcycle. <laughs> I didn't know how to ride a motorcycle, you know, uh, clearly influenced by my brother. Well, not only did I graduate top of the class, I graduated top of the school and later on heard that I graduated top of the country. So I was going to get this motorcycle. And I witnessed the biggest argument <coughs> between my parents that day because my mom thought it was insane. And I'm talking about a motorcycle, not a scooter. And I didn't know how to ride this thing. And I had a very difficult time learning it because I don't have the best coordination skills, but I did it. And I got to be known as that pioneer. And it didn't take long for, in even a small community for women to start having motorcycles with really cool helmets. This was in the 80s. So then I want to also give credit to my teachers. Uh, when I was in grad school, I had a teacher. And I remember I was taking classes in the evening because I was working during the day. And I saw two of the students struggling with something that kind of came easy to me. So I uh, stayed late and I helped them and the professor observed it. And honestly, we talked about leadership being a responsibility. What I really wanted to do was go home after a long day, read my book, but I felt a responsibility to help my classmates. And the professor asked me to stay afterwards, and he says to me, you know, Irma, in case of emergency, a natural leader emerges, not to be confused with the leader naturally immerses. And what you did just now is you displayed leadership. So for the capstone, I'd like you to lead the class. And I was so tired that day, like, why me? You know, so I'm sure as leaders, we sometimes think, why me? But coming back to the man who influenced it, currently my boss is a male and his boss, his boss, our CIO is also a male. I will tell you that I would not be sitting here without their support. Mm. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Yes. Oh, the story about your teacher reminded me of my teacher in math. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <coughs> um, let's go back to the hardcore topics. Um, cracking down the so-called digital glass ceiling for women seems to be one of the major challenges that uh, we're facing today if we want to minimize the gender gap in the age of automation. Here I would like um, to allow myself to provoke you with a, with a quote of Madeleine Albright who said that there is a special place in hell for women who don't help each other. In this sense, how do you support other women to be better equipped for the digital future? And um, here I would like maybe to start with Maria this time. Yeah, as I said before, um, I strongly believe 
in the power of collaboration. I think, I think that uh, we can give women uh, enormous support to change the statistics in our advantage. I test that with uh, Nine Marias. It's a campaign uh, where female creators, nine female creators named Maria, uh, supported me in my first steps as a producer and uh, composer and uh, my first audiovisual show, Heart Eclipse Live, uh, featuring uh, the music of my first album. And Nine Marias uh, had a very positive effect and uh, respond on society and uh, uh, inspired me to uh, develop my idea and to create an organization to support women creators in Bulgaria. I think that uh, female creators need more inspiration, uh, more role models, uh, mentoring, and uh, they need to be more confident because they're not, uh, they're not less than men and they can do anything, whatever they want. Sasha, you're a devoted supporter of uh, women in, in, in the digital sphere. Would you like to share maybe a bit of what you're doing? Because I know it's a lot. Actually, she leader is an example of this. We are doing this on a yearly basis. And um, um, one would say uh, why you take uh, women uh, outside of the men's dialogue. Uh, it is still needed. Uh, I truly believe, as Maria, that um, uh, women and men are equally talented and uh, uh, we uh, rather should create an environment uh, where with no prejudices, with no limitations, with no borders, everybody can express its talents. But still, there is a need, um, specifically in my professional field in the digital industry, uh, to create a safe space uh, where women uh, can collaborate, can exchange and help each other and learn from each other uh, in uh, both professional uh, and private dimension. And uh, Bulgarian Center of Women in Technologies uh, that um, I founded uh, in 2012 is an initiative that supports uh, this idea. We do different things, role modeling uh, meetups called She Is Me. And we uh, invite interesting uh, figures and speakers uh, like the ladies uh, of uh, uh, participants in the, uh, in the dialogue today. Uh, to share their experience and through this, uh, this to be an encouragement uh, for other women. Uh, also, uh, we are meeting on a monthly basis uh, to uh, discuss different topics that are related to the work-life balance, uh, to um, on how we can combine professional life uh, uh, with the private engagements that uh, still have, uh, of course, female and male specificity. Uh, and um, uh, one initiative that is very close to my heart is uh, called uh, Entrepre Girl. Uh, five years ago, I've initiated a um, yearly competition uh, where uh, 16 to 23 years old uh, young women, girls, are invited to introduce their entrepreneurial ideas on a platform and um, uh, the idea is not to uh, identify um, the future business um, concepts and this to be investable, not at all. It is uh, more to uh, encourage those young women to make a step, to say to the world, that's me, um, I stand behind this idea and uh, uh, also, uh, to share it with everybody. And we have more than 200 girls that uh, made it already. Uh, they created within them uh, this confidence and belief that uh, they can be entrepreneurs uh, and they can choose later on in their life to continue with this or to uh, m make something else. 
but uh, this expanded area of confidence that uh, they can do it and uh, uh, that they share it uh, with everybody uh, is already very important. And um, why this is needed, just to quote uh, similarly to Maria, what are the statistics? Uh, we have those glass ceilings. Um, uh, the, uh, in uh, student environments, 65% um, uh, of the uh, student companies the, that are created in experimental environment in schools are girls-led. In the real life, only 11 in Bulgaria and uh, more than 7 in Europe of the uh, startups are female-led. So the question is what is happening uh, for two, three years uh, in the choices of these uh, girls uh, when uh, to, to go ahead with, uh, with the dreams that they had and they even gained some experience uh, around this. So what uh, very often happens is that uh, mom says, um, uh, look, you better uh, now uh, you have a boyfriend, you better first marry, um, grow your family, and then you make the career. Or the boyfriend says, uh, you are so smart and uh, I really rely very much on you to support me in my entrepreneurial idea. And here, this is not about contradiction. Uh, it is uh, uh, more with to really stimulate the culture that... Uh, it is okay, uh, girls or boys, uh, to be entrepreneurs and to support each other in their private uh, domain. And it is okay today, uh, women to make a career if they are uh, fond of, uh, because we can work remotely. We can combine much easier due to digital connectedness, uh, career and uh, uh, um, uh, growing children and uh, it is both possible for husband or for wife uh, uh, to do it and to share those responsibilities. So we need to uh, give a light to those, uh, uh, to those uh, examples and to the realities. And um, yeah, uh, there is a work needed in accordance to uh, really promote this culture. I think that uh, new digitally connected world uh, uh, and uh, the need we to uh, address collectively uh, the um, challenges before us uh, is also opening new space for um, bias-free or uh, territories that are not so loaded with the traditional uh, perceptions uh, like uh, new green tech uh, impact uh, areas where uh, the space um, is not uh, as uh, um, structured in the mindsets of, uh, of the people as a men, women, uh, territory of business or creative industries that are just born uh, through collaboration between digital technologies and uh, art. I truly believe that uh, we are moving into uh, a territory where female entrepreneurship together uh, with the uh, female-male leadership in a combined way uh, will uh, give a birth to uh, new, uh, very uh, successful projects uh, that uh, are also uh, overcoming those glass ceilings uh, that uh, many women still carry within themselves and put as a limitation. Mm. Thank you. Arma? So the question I think was, um, if I remember, it's about the glass ceiling and what we do to make sure that... Um, yes, we, we how do you escape this place how do you, where we don't help each other? Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> so um, for me, advocacy and uh, you need to stick your neck out for those you believe in and I have I would say a fair amount of females who I have groomed, taken under my wings, 
and I have scars and stars to show for them. Uh, I want to share with you a story about this young uh, lady I hired about eight years ago. She had just graduated from an MBA program and she had very little experience. She put herself through school by taking care of small children and uh, I was very impressed when I saw her um, around. Not somebody I knew personally, but she made an impression. So I hired her and at that time I had a female manager who says, what are you, crazy? Look at her resume, she was a nanny. And I said, you know, did you also see that she has an MBA and it's interesting that you would trust her with your child but not with a small project. I mean, what does that say about us as, as females? Well, she's still at the World Bank. I'm so proud of her. Just last week, she informed me she got her third promotion in eight years in the World Bank where an average promotion is five to seven years. Wow. You can only imagine how wonderful she is. But so advocacy and a support group, you need to support each other. And uh, I have done, I hope, what I can. I have edited resumes. I have helped written cover letters. I have helped on mock interviews for them to go to the next job. When I see a job posting, I say, you know what, I'd like to see you apply for it and let me know how I can help. And my answer to you would not be complete if I, you know, didn't say to you that they do the same for me. Mm -hmm. um, I have someone who, told, who asked me right before I came to Sofia, Irma, there's the next level position. I would like, f to s I would like for you to be that person. And I said, uh, no, um, I have other plans. And her response to me was, don't be selfish. This is not just only about you. This is we want to see you in that position because it's also good for us. Because it is a community of people and a community of service. And um, did, you, did you quote Madeleine Albright? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so she, I like her quote. There's a special place in hell you know, for women who don't support each other. But you know what, Irena? I think the hottest place in hell is for women who are in a position of authority and to help women and don't do it. I totally agree. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. Um, as leaders, and this time I would say we, we're expected to be confident, to communicate clearly to a wide group of people to have answers to often very complex situations. But in my personal experience, sometimes there is also um, these harsh moments where we doubt ourselves, our capabilities, our decisions, our ideas. I'm sure that you had those too. Can I ask you to share with us a sentence or maybe a personal mantra that uh, you tell yourself in moments like this to pull yourself up? And uh, Maria, maybe I would like to start with you. All right. Uh, well, um, to be a good person is maybe the most important thing in life. And Thank you. when it comes to art, it's crucial not to hide your madness. Great. <laughs> Irma? So, for years, every morning, when I sit down with my cup of coffee, I count my blessings. I think about how blessed I am, how thankful I am to have the job I have, to live where I live, to have this great family. And then three months ago, I lost my husband, love of my life. So it's a little bit harder now to count my blessings, but I think I have something even more powerful. And I'm sorry, I'm trying to like keep it together here, right? So I can hear his voice telling me, that's my girl, go get him. So everybody in the studio and for those who are watching, go get him. Thank you for sharing this, very touching. Thank you, Irma. Sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sasha, what about you? 
What is your sentence or personal mantra? Yeah, actually, I think uh, that um, the challenges before every one of us are as big as uh, one can cope with them. And I remind this um, to myself in every critical moment and uh, try to see myself on the other side uh, saying, OK, if you are confronted with this insecurity or with uh, this complex situation to manage, um, then you can do it and um, you are an expert. And this helps me to, uh, to go uh, through it. Otherwise, um, I have a trick that I can also share uh, with you. If it becomes uh, critical or I feel insecure, I have an alternative breathing. Inhale, exhale, ex <laughs> inhale, exhale. And through this uh, process, I'm concentrating uh, similarly to Irma uh, on what um, I have, how many important things, the support of the family, beautiful environment, uh, great team, um, smart uh, daughter that I'm proud of. Uh, uh, so uh, if you remember uh, what are things that you uh, step on that uh, gives you the, the ground in life, this helps you to overcome insecurities, but also to make uh, big things. Uh, but Irina, I want uh, to return the same question uh, back to you in the other room. Uh, you alone are leader. You started uh, a totally new um, media, innovative media a year ago, and you are managing uh, a theme. Uh, what is your mantra? <laughs> I have to say I'm in such kind of position for the first time. So over the last one and a half years, I had a lot to learn. I also started meditating. I'm also very thankful to a man who gave me the chance to, to start um, these um, trending topics in Bulgaria. Um, I did a lot of shadow work in the last one and a half years. But um, the mantra that I would like to share with you is uh, maybe the one that I'm sometimes telling to myself. Um, well, if I don't try, then I have failed before I even started. So let's give it a try. That's it. And I don't expect to be perfect. I don't expect to be the best. Um, I just try and let's see what happens. And it usually works. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I would like to thank to all of you for uh, your wonderful answers and your stories. I hope that they would be inspiring to those who had joined us today online. Um, at the end, um, I believe that um, all of us keeping it together, um, we're gonna make a difference uh, supporting each other. And uh, here I believe that it's not just women who uh, should support each other, but we as a community, as a whole. And um, with this thought, I would like to um, welcome you on uh, the 14th of May to the She Leader at Digital 2020. I would like to welcome both women and men to join the discussion because it's important, it's critical. Um, it is an opportunity to maybe change the future to, uh, to a better place. So see you there and uh, till then, I hope you have a great, uh, great time, get a great spring and uh, keep it safe. Thank you.